taking care of their uh, plastics or something like that. I don't know. But the governments work for corporations, exactly, don't they? Yeah, there's it's my, their mates. Exactly. It's like my friend was also telling me about how, um, kind of lobbyists mm. and how basically lobbyists are the ones that make the laws, really and truly, in this country. And it's not the government or the politics or the politicians who have the face of we're putting this thing out. It's really a company, like a company will come to the lobbyists and they'll try and discuss something. We, we want this done and then the lobbyists will go and try and get that deal done for on behalf of the company so that this law will be passed in their favour. And it's just like, huh. When you think about that, then what? why is this whole democracy thing really about like what am i actually <laughs> democracy, yeah what true democracy doesn't really exist yeah, does what, am I, what am i actually voting for <laughs> there's even someone like may her husband runs like a you know a security firm like she's not in you know she's going to be in his yeah work you know in working his for his benefits so yeah, exactly right. so it's like maybe i should get into politics first Maybe I should be. Someone said to me like that I should get into politics, and I was just like, ah, it seems too shady and shit like that. I feel, like, well, maybe I should, man. I don't know. Fuck yeah, I don't know. Stand on the outside. Because <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I feel like there's, it, it's it's crazy that if you want anything done, you have to do it yourself. You can't you can't rely on the government to mm. do anything for you really and truly they're, they're having their own internal conversation about some other shit that's more important than us um that's why they take away from shit like uh what is it like i read this article that's what this this article stuck in my mind from last uh episode i recorded with uh fury wd mm. um there's 250 schools around the whole of england that are shutting at 12pm on a Friday because the schools do not have the funds to pay the teachers to keep them in past 4 o'clock. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they can afford to not uh, get Amazon to pay their taxes. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's just like, where, where does this country's priorities lie? I don't know. I mean, you know, it's like the bankers were the ones who caused the economic crash, and yet it's us who, who are paying for it. Yeah. You know? And then, you know, back in the day when people like David Cameron and George Osborne were going to court to defend bankers, yeah. you know, and let them be allowed to keep their bonuses or whatever, it's just exactly. it's all a joke. And, and like the people who are running our country nowadays, they all went to university debt free. It, actually, they, they all went to university for free. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and now everyone is paying back nine money. £9,000 a year. Now, now they're paying nine grand a year. I, I, I'm only pay, I only paid three grand a year when I went to uni. Yeah, same. And uh, £9,000 for one year at university. Was is like my whole int- the cost of my whole entire education at university. And most first years just get fucked anyway. Yeah. Isn't it, you know? <laughs> and first year doesn't, doesn't even matter, doesn't count, matter does it? or count for your entire degree. When I, <laughs> you just have to pass. <laughs> first year is just induction into university, and you literally just have to pass. And then your degree starts from the second year. So mm. basically, university is like a glorified college mm. with an introduction year. <laughs> and you, but you pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> and you're 18 and you and go and get like yeah. messed up every, every night of the week. And just have loads of free time to just basically do whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 a, it's a bubble. And get money for it. Yeah, 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 you get money. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> Anyone looking to go to university, right? University is a great time. Don't, don't like, take our cynical thoughts and, like, think, oh, no, look, look nine grand a year. Oh, no, guys, listen. Go to university because I say go to university because university is, is a bubble of life. For three to four years, where life does not actually matter, (laughs) 
Like the real world, <laughs> the real world is not a thing for three to four years. Like, do it. <laughs> like do it. Go. Like hundred percent. Because when you actually do leave, you realize how real the real world actually is. <laughs> And you're just like, yo, I wasn't prepared for this. They didn't, sh- they didn't, they didn't, have, they didn't I think, prepare us. <laughs> I think I did that my final exam bit and I just sat in my room and just went, now what? <laughs> you know? Like, it was just, like, and then everyone has that year, don't they, when you first leave, where you just a bit, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Everyone's just kind of, like, in some kind of... And, it, you know, and depending on what degree you studied as well, it's like, also, it's just like, what do I... How do I get a job with this? What, where do I now work? <laughs> like, I know, like, like, for me, it was more... It was like, because I, I don't know... What do they call it? A vocational degree. So it's like a, an arts degree. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I did dance and drama with music and sound. So, like, for me, getting into the creative arts anyway is hard enough. I'm going to have to be working for free until I get that job that pays me, you know? But... Mm-hmm. Shit. <coughs> uh, since I just um, sorry Dante for calling you were calling and you were cutting off the recording and I'll call you back later <laughs> um, you're, I don't know if you listen to the podcast so, yeah, you'll hear this if you do <laughs> <laughs> um, I forgot what I was saying <laughs> something about and uh, Fight the power, the uh, university. Yeah, go to university, guys. Uh, oh, about the arts degree. And, the arts um, degree. Finding the job. Finding the job. Yeah. I don't know. I went into admin because it just seemed like the right thing to do. Or it was either that or a what are they called. Uh, I did um, uh, uh, like promotional work, like uh, handing out flyers and shit like that. I've done. I've done that shit, but like. I needed a stable job, you know. <laughs> I need to know there was money definitely coming in every week or every month. I just I need to know. I need stability. <laughs> <laughs> I used to uh, when you were saying about the arts degree, like I did um I did an arts degree at uni as well, and that was with film. But I used to feel feel like feel bad sometimes because some of the people I live with were like environmental science students. So not I'm not saying that like we don't have to do work. Yeah, but they did a lot more yeah, work yeah, and yeah. so we'd be sat had a lot more time to just chill out watching <laughs> films and stuff and then like the, the environmental science one of them my friend like comes down the stairs and he's like oh you do you not do any work and it's like I'm a film student I'm, I'm working can you like please leave me alone fuck off <laughs> <laughs> like, so, cause stop getting in the way of my work <laughs> like, so, yeah, right. did actually when I was uh, studying media thinking of funny about this um, did you find when you were studying film that it made watching films kind of like, uh, what's the word? Like work. <laughs> I, as a habit, I think I've picked up for quite a, for quite a while now. Where I can't watch anything without critiquing it at the same time, like yeah. or like trying to find like, I don't know. There's an opening scene in Dunkirk where um, the camera pulls out and there's these like two poles, yeah, like on either side, and you know you do the whole like, oh, it's to symbolise they're boxed in. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean, you just kind of you just can't help but like yeah. just do all that. Like when I was studying media at college, like that's what it was like watching a film. I was watching it. I was like, oh, so, I, 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 oh, so they're doing this shot because of mise en scène. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was like, oh, they've stolen that from Sergio Leone. You it? know, I was like, I can't watch. I couldn't watch films, but like, yeah, you probably have that sixth sense. You just automatically just you're just critiquing it. You're just like, that. <laughs> but uh, I remember, I remember once trying to. Outdo the arty, arty types by being I by like out arty party in them, <laughs> and it basically came down to like I did I did work hard, but there was one time I just had a lot of other stuff on and I didn't do the project properly. And it was basically to make like this two minute film using a green screen, so I was like, what am I gonna do? So I just did this collage of just loads of different or like visual collage thing of like like riots and all this kind of stuff, and then just put a bloke in front of a green screen like in parts of it with some stuff going on in the background and whatnot and then I had to give reasons for, for why I did it and I didn't make do that either so on the spot I'm just going oh wow well, this is to symbolise like like this in society and blah blah blah, blah. I'm just going <laughs> on this massive tangent about what it all means and then at the end like the um my teacher 
he was basically a spitting image of Morrissey. <laughs> <laughs> like, driving black room glasses, like, queer yeah. for whatnot. And he just looks at me with his, like, hand stroking his chin. He's just like, Ben, that was the biggest load of shit. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> you just didn't do it properly, did you? <laughs> You're right, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, since we're getting on to you, like, let's talk more about you, Ben. No, that's, that's <laughs> I like the conversation we're having. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> More general. General, all right, cool. But it's, you know, it's your show, man. Well, I just wanted to find out a few things just for the audience purposes, just for writers like who are listening. Um, like so, like you've written how many plays? Uh, so, the, um, the one that's the one including that, the one we're including doing, including the one that I'm directing. Yeah. Yeah, I've done three. So oh, okay, far. cool. That's cool. And what got you on to writing plays in the first place? Uh, it was by accident, really. I was back home in um, Swindon, and uh, basically, like, there was an old cinema mm-hmm. that had been like run down for decades, and uh, a performer, a bloke called Dan Rivers, he opened up a place called the Bohemian Balcony. Oh, and cool. I suppose it's kind of like you could describe it as being like a Warhol factory kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, like yeah. you just had those different stuff going on. Like so, you had like plays, and like artists can come in and do stuff, or people can make films there that kind of thing and um, they wanted an opening play to uh, and I just went in just to help paint <laughs> and then um, the guy was like oh you write and I was like yeah I write poetry and whatnot and he was like oh we're trying to write this open this play but it has to be about the building and blah blah and then uh, he was just like do you want to have a, want to have a go have yeah. a go at it and so I did and then uh, yeah I've been doing this since then that's pretty cool like it's, it's kind of like more on that thing like everything happens for a reason like you it's like it's it's not it's too much to say kind of like being in the right place at the right time oh actually um it's more like like i don't know like it, you went there it, it, it was yeah you went down there just to paint you were just you just wanted to help out just because it was a new theatre opening up. You just didn't want anything from it. And then the opportunity landed on your lap and you're like, well, yeah, why not? Why not take it up? Yeah, it was... And was this play a like, success? Uh... Hmm. It was... <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it sold out like it was on for two nights and they, they both sold out. But the thing is, it wasn't... The thing that made it difficult was... I got. I had two weeks to write it. It could have hardly any dialogue, because it was all being put on in a bit of a rush, um, and I had to explore the building. So it had to be a play where the audience walked around this old, oh, okay. this old building, but it had to have some kind of story to run through it. So um, me and the guy, me and the guy I wrote it with, actually called Seb, uh, Seb Wolf. Like he fell into it as well, the same way I did, and um, <clears throat> yeah. So we ended up just doing. Apparently the the cinema was haunted by a ghost oh. so we decided to like base it on this woman and she like you go through and she's going through history oh, so there's all these cool. like different bits yeah, so yeah, yeah. but no, it was good fun it was a good experience and then um yeah like was... from writing that like i know you've written uh two other plays that were strictly on the stage but would you write another immersive theater play no, i'd love to yeah, yeah that'd be cool I've got an idea for one. Like, I'm going to try writing yeah. sometime soon. But. Um, would it just be kind of immersive as in, in a theatre or kind of immersive as in kind of like outside, like, a, do you know, like, people when they do those tours, mm. kind of like taking people on a tour around maybe uh, uh, an abandoned place or something like that? Yeah. yeah. It's like, like with, um, with that lady played you, mum, that was... That was very much like that, and that was okay. that was quite good fun. But we, I kind of we added some like David Lynch type stuff in there. It was kind of like, and you know, being in an old abandoned build, mm. abandoned building, it had like a really ghostly kind of. Uh, yeah, that's nice. Yeah. But yeah, no, it was good fun, man. And I'm looking forward to what me and you are putting on. Yeah, definitely. And that play is called Prey, and I love the play. It's absolutely amazing. I can't wait to put it on. Um, right now the stage that we're at is we're kind of we're looking to try and get funding 
So we're looking for a venue 